I mean, Cynthia Nixon, I, I, I do want to take a moment to plug her. I think that's, again, that's super important. Well, we're going to talk about this, but what the, wor- the Working Families Party, and as you know, the Working Families Party back in 2014, uh, was it 2014? Where are we? 2014? Four years ago? Um, I think it was 2014. Ran, well, they were toying with the idea of running, and this is not an endorsement, they were actually going to run Zephyr Teachout on the Working Families Party ticket. And at that time, I uh, found myself sitting in a room with about 30 or 40 leaders of advocacy groups. There were no unions there. Uh, it was an informal situation where uh, people were, were meeting to talk about whether or not they wanted to challenge uh, Cuomo. I mean, I didn't, I didn't have anything to say. I was more observing. And uh, I was amazed at the advocacy groups who rely on state funding who are like, yes, challenge Cuomo. If we get the if we get Astorino, uh, Rob Astorino who was the Republican who was uh, who was going to run and ultimately did. They said that's going to stink, but the fact is is that Cuomo is worse, and uh, I was shocked by that. Now it turned out at the time I think what was going on, working families, um, uh, the working families um, party is. Uh, has been very much a function of union support. CWA, SIEU, very big part of the Working Families Party. And at the time, I think they were uh, concerned about trying to, um, to move ahead without the support of these unions. Because in New York, it's very transactional. <laughs> and literally, the governor can destroy a union. And that is what he threatened this time. If the Working Families Party endorsed Cynthia Nixon in her run against Cuomo in the Democratic primary. Now, remember, the Working Families Party decided not to run Zephyr Teachout. She then made a decision that she was going to run in the Democratic primary. She did so without the formal support of the, uh, the Working Families Party. She pulled in 37% of the vote. Most of it was from upstate. Cynthia Nixon is looking to do better downstate in New York City. And um, getting the Working Families Party endorsement means two things. And, and, and they certainly knew, the Working Families Party certainly knew that the CWA, the Communication Workers of America, and the SEIU would would walk away from the Working Families Party. Now, I have a feeling it might be some. There'll be a day when they come back. Um. But they have left the Working Families Party, and the Working Families Party still went ahead. Uh, their rank and file endorsed Cynthia Nixon, and um. It's also an indication that the the Working Families Party feels strong enough with their relationships to advocacy groups and whatnot that they don't need the unions to exist. So if you have the opportunity to support the Working Families Party, do so, uh, because right now they uh, are probably going to need it. Uh, Here is uh, an example of a couple of, um, I guess, uh, Craig T. Nelson. I don't know who that is on... uh, on he's a he's a you know he's extremely a, a online well known right? Twitter yeah. account, but it doesn't yes. matter. The substance is right. Uh, a well known Twitter account has uh, that really is the best way. No, to I know. Him. I mean, I know him, but I don't know who he is or she is. Nobody does. Well, that's okay. So um, he's at QAnon. It's all it, it goes even. It's, it's even a <laughs> before Cynthia Nixon. Uh, Cuomo says he remains opposed to recreational marijuana. That's in February eighth of twenty seventeen. On April 12th, 2018, Cuomo lays groundwork for legalizing marijuana. This is after, literally after a week from Cynthia Nixon saying it in a, and there was a story about this. It's at Isabel Gillies' house. Uh, Isabel Gillies held a fundraiser for uh, for her. 
And uh, she commented then that she came out publicly and said that she was supporting legalization of marijuana. Cuomo has done a uh, maybe I wouldn't say a 360. I would say probably closer to a uh, no, a 180 is really he's done more of like a 170. He's almost there. 160. Same thing with the IDC. Uh, On October 24th, uh, 2010, uh, Cuomo vows offensive against labor unions. And now in 2018, Cuomo signs a bill that gives unions more power to recruit members despite the Supreme Court case. This is the CWA and SEIU probably facing the prospect of a post-Janus world in some respects. Uh, Didn't he later go to a private fundraiser for the IDC after he publicly said that they weren't going to be a thing anymore? I I, I mean, I think that... um, there's reason to be skeptical. Uh, and he said this back in the day, too. Uh, one of the things that he supposedly had uh, promised the Working Families Party back then uh, in 2014 was that he was going to, you know, campaign against them. Um, but we'll see. And uh, 2017, Governor Cuomo decides he actually doesn't r- uh, run the MTA. Uh, and now April 7th, $800 million for repairs will help the subway get up and going, uh, says Cuomo. He, he is, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. And you're already seeing stories. Um, there's no doubt that, um, that Cuomo, that in many ways, Cynthia Nixon has already won. But Cuomo is afraid. Not necessarily of losing, although he could be afraid of losing. Cuomo was afraid of getting, doing worse. He was afraid of getting less than 60% uh, or, you know, less than 70% when he was going against Zephyr Teachout. And 37% really hurt him. Because this is a guy who wants to run for president and he can't even consolidate the Democrats in New York State. And if he, if, if Cuomo, let me say this. Let me put it this way. If Cuomo doesn't win with a greater margin against Cynthia Nixon than he did with Zephyr Teachout, even he may realize that his presidential aspirations are uh, delusions. That's how bad it is for him. But I, well, listen, I like that. it's aspirations not inconceivable. It's not even uh, it's not even um, it's not inconceivable. I mean, it's a stretch, but it's not inconceivable that Cynthia Nixon could win. She has much greater name recognition. Uh, there is much more uh, a sort of broader understanding of Cuomo. New York City is now in the hands of somebody uh, who is not a, uh, a, a Cuomo fan in the form of uh, who stuck de Blasio. his knockout for him last time. That's another part of the story as well. And de Blasio helped protect him from this scenario when it was Zephyr teach out and got repaid with endless humiliation yes. and attempt at undermining. So it's like, it's not only that there's bad blood, it's like the scenario playing out a second time with worse blood. And do not underestimate the implications of the working family party. The working families party's success uh, in running a working family party only, because mostly it's a fusion ticket in this, in this state. So people can run Democrats can run on the Working Family Party. But when you look to the city council in New York, you've got a couple of new uh, Working Family Party. That is, they're not running as a fusion ticket. They're not Democrats running on the Working Family Party line. They're Working Family Party candidates. So the power of the Working Family Party is pretty strong in uh, downstate, in New York City. And that's, that's going to make the difference in this election if, if Cynthia Nixon's going to win. I mean, Cuomo definitely deserves to lose to her or somebody, but I kind of want to tamp down on expectations a little bit for how progressive Cynthia Nixon herself would be. Not only because, uh, I mean, she could be, you know, intending to be very progressive, but she doesn't have the institutional power in Albany in order to make her ideas go through. Also, she said something pretty shady about unions that I guess they're playing off as a gaffe, but perhaps is how she really feels when she said uh, the unions have to understand with the deals they have now, you can't hope to make improvements to the trains in a fiscally responsible way. Everybody's got to pull together and everybody's got to make sacrifices. And when a politician says sacrifices about anyone but the 1%, that kind of sets alarm bells off in my head. 
Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Um, I mean, I think you, your first point is is well taken. I mean, if she gets up to New York, she's not going to have any institutional support. Although the work, Working Families Party and theoretically the Democrats, if she becomes the Democratic nominee, um, but yes, I don't. I mean, I'm a little bit surprised about that with the um, with the unions, but. Um, I will very dumb and shady comment. Still very much worth supporting. Do yeah, without a doubt. Uh, Andrew Cuomo is a horrible human being. Like at this point, I will definitely vote for her, but I don't know if I'm going to canvass for her. You know. Okay, fair enough. Uh, meanwhile, do uh, this without that canvas, Cynthia. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of people feel the same way. Oh, maybe. Just it's not just me. Um, all right, we're going to take a quick break, head into the fun half Many of the program. Many people are saying A lot of people are saying A lot of people are saying they're supportive, but they won't canvas for it. You hear it all over. My friend Chuck won't go to Paris, won't canvas for Cynthia Nixon. A lot of people are saying it. Oh, we've been talking about it in the DSA. Many people. DSA, too, by the way. <laughs> over, over that one comment? No, no, no. What else? I mean, we have an... Oh, it's systemic critique of you're capitalist seen, political parties. Your scene oh. with her in uh, Sex in the City was pretty I understand. disgusting to people. I understand. I, a <laughs> that lot was also a problem. And that. Well, okay. So there's no, but there's nobody in the Democratic Party who would garner um, full support in a primary, in a Democratic primary. Well, or maybe, I, I don't know. We, we've been de- debating that at the moment, so I might have a better answer for you soon. Okay. All right, fair enough. Um, this is the death knell of incrementalism. Mm. I mean, this is, uh, I, I, I mean, I definitely agree. Obviously, without the institutional support, it's very difficult. Although the Working Families Party has, you know, it's pretty good as far as, uh, for, as, far as it goes in New York. Um, that's a scalp that's worth getting. Pick your pressure points and, you know, I think start trying to make those more sort of bold decisions when there's actually a real power base to do it from it's like so speculative you know it's it's definitely worth even if it's minimal amount of energy the shock waves of him actually losing would be really significant in and of itself 